I'm rebuilding the real motor on a Tascam 122 Mark III. And this video will also be part of the rebuild video on that deck, but I wanted to do the motor separately. And this is the typical find on the idler tire. Of course, it's cracked. And that's generally how they are. In uh, the other video, on the rebuild video, you can see where I tested this out in the beginning and I held the mic close to the transport and it was very noisy and I think it was more noisy than just this idler and so I need to have a very close look at this motor and you know this is rotating a little bit it's got more friction than what I normally see. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not free. It's not rotating freely like it really should. Well, let's hook this up to power and see how it rotates. The bracket pivots about the shaft adequately, but the gear train itself seems a little tight. So let's put some power on it. I can feel a, I can feel a vibration that I'm not happy with. It rotates, but I don't like the uh, I don't like the vibration. Let's see what kind of current it draws on stall. Uh, I mean, that seems okay. It's just tight. Everything just seems too tight. The difficult part of these is this bracket, removing the bracket. It's not something that's serviced by TIAC. I've never seen them available. I've tried. I have tried to order the parts. But they're not available and I've not been successful getting them off. So what I've done is I've taken some measurements and I've drawn up what I think might be a little tool to help lever it off of there. Uh, prying with a screwdriver is not, it's just, the material is too brittle, it's too thin, it's too small, and I'm not the kind to uh, pry with a lot of screwdrivers. Now, if I could get to both sides of this and try to put even upward pressure on it, that might be something different, but I can't. The one side is, is uh, unavailable to me. Now, just in case I needed to destroy the gear to get the bracket off, I did purchase some new gears. These are uh, Tascam TX gears. They are a serviceable part. And so that's my backup plan, is if I need to destroy the gear to get it, the gear is what holds the bracket in place, not the other way around. And so it's the gear that's the problem, not the bracket. So that's the job at hand. And we'll get started.
let's go make a tool. So we've got a piece of 01 oil hardening tool steel, quarter inch diameter. And this is uh, about a 93 thousandths or just over two millimeter, between two and three millimeter. This is a solid carbide end mill cutting the slot. Taking it to width. I'm tapping a 540 pitch screw thread for uh, my pivot point, my fulcrum. And there's the finished part. If you're curious about the uh, scale, just look at the numbers on a penny and that kind of tells you where I'm at. I heat treated this. The coloration on it is the tempering color. I'm about 950,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the tempering side of it, which is pretty high for 01 tool steel, but I wanted some ductility on this. I don't want it to just snap off because I know I'm going to put some pretty good force on it. So this is all theoretical. I, I'm just, I'm trying this out. If it doesn't work, then I'll go from there. Uh, it's a very thin cross section. We're talking, you know, 30 thousandths, uh, 0.8 millimeter is the thickness on that. And so I'm really counting on just uh, past experience with this material to, you know, make this, make this uh, job work. You can see right there, I've got, that's my uh, fulcrum point. And this is just a traditional, you know, lever, seesaw. <laughs> I'm seesawing this off of here. So, yep, that's on there pretty good. <laughs> that's really, oh, I got it to move. All right, if it moves, I can get it off. That wasn't too bad. You can see how much force I'm actually putting on that, and it's a lot. Imagine that much force on a wedge like a, a flat blade screwdriver on one single point, trying to trying to pull that off. And I, I'm just afraid that I would break it and then find myself fabricating a new bracket. So anyway, now I've got a way to go. I've got a tool that can do this for me and uh, I'm in good shape. Yeah, even even at that point, it was still a pretty good tug to get it off. There it is, undamaged. The gear was saved. The bracket was saved. Very good. Okay, let's get this guy apart. Yeah, note the position of this uh, spring thrust washer, thrust spring. Yeah, 
Remove the shield. Yeah. And of course, like always happens, I lost the footage of disassembly, but it's a fairly standard disassembly. And in this particular case, it's even easier than usual because of the uh, short length of the case. Okay, so I've got it dialed in on the lathe. I'm going to turn this commutator down. I've got about uh, two thousand or two ten thousandths run out on the shaft. And I'm going to compare that to the commutator run out. There's a thousandth. And there's a half. So it's looking like about a thousandth and a half total run out on the commutator, which I don't know, it's probably okay. It seems like a lot to me. But I am going to turn that down and make it concentric, and I know that that will help all the way around. Okay, let's clean it up. I've got a freshly honed tool bit here, high-speed steel. It's extremely sharp, maybe a ten thousandths radius at the outside. Copper has to be turned with an extremely sharp tool bit because it will work harden and cause all kinds of problems. Now the amount that I'm taking off here is the smallest amount I can possibly take on my cross slide. Um, if you were to take a human hair and divide it up into 10 pieces, one of those pieces is about what I'm, I'm trying to take off. Okay, I'm pretty much getting it down now to where it's completely turned. Make one last check. Make sure I get all the all the blue off. All right, that's good. I got it. I try to clean out the grooves here with a toothpick. And of course the toothpick's way, way too big to get in there. So I shave, shave some off of it. And yeah, I end up spending a little time on this part. But in the end, it looks something like this. And all I did was take uh, some uh, 5,000 grit and just turn it around that 5,000 grit just to basically uh, pull off any burrs that might have might have hung on there. That's that's how much I took off right there. Okay, let's take a look at the brushes. The brushes are very black. 
not unusually black. I've seen them like this before. But they are black and they're dirty. Kind of see it right there. Now the way I like to do this is with a piece of paper soaked with contact adhesive, uh, adhesive. <laughs> contact cleaner. Most of the time, this will do the job for me, but this isn't even touching it. That's like black paint on there. It's barely even touching. So I move on to uh, alcohol IPA and try that. And that's not helping me any. So let's get a little more aggressive. And you see there's almost nothing coming off on that on that wipe. So what I end up doing is now this is synthetic steel wool. It has no uh, ferric content at all. This is a uh, uh, rubberized abrasive like material. And I wouldn't use steel wool on this. I wouldn't use any, any metallic cleaners. But this is finally starting to take it off. And even with this, it's taking quite a bit of time, quite a bit of work to get this, these brushes clean. So for whatever reason, that is probably likely a big part of my problem with this motor why it was behaving the way it was behaving they're just not making good contact I, I go after this for a while like this but really I'm not I'm not willing to get much more aggressive than this with it There, they finally look nice again. So I want to get some oil down in that bearing. Now I'm just going to go in at an angle and drop it down in there. I've got an impression that these bearings are extremely dry. And I can't tell you why I work with this kind of stuff every day, and I just have a feeling that these are exceptionally dry bearings. And so I'm basically going to fill them up and let the oil soak in. Usually you'll see me do one drop, and that's generally adequate. But these are very dry for whatever reason. Now I'll do the same thing with the front bearing. I'll just basically fill it up and let the oil soak into it. Now this front bearing should not have come out. Uh, that should have stayed in the housing with its retainer, but it didn't. And that kind of gives me a clue that it was pretty dry and sticking onto the shaft. 
So one of the things that I would probably do the next time before I disassembled it is I would oil that front shaft or oil the shaft and let it soak in a little bit before I tried to remove the inside to keep this front bearing in place. That's another clue to me that they're, they're more dry than normal. I'm just going to do this a couple times. Let these let these re really soak up some oil. I managed to get it on the outside of that one. Let's try to get it on the inside now. There, a little better. Okay, we'll let those sit for a while. Start the assembly, the oil seal. Let's have a couple of Teflon or uh, maybe Delrin. I kind of seem more like Delrin spacers. Uh, they also act as a thrust bearing, of course. And here's this front bearing and the retainer. And that's supposed to go inside of that retainer, that copper retainer right there. Sorry for the focus. And I was, I was not able to get this back into place on camera. I had to do this on a low power microscope. I had to raise each one of those tabs individually, rocking the bearing into the tab and then go to the next tab to get it back into place without uh, damaging anything. So that's why I say I think the next time I would lubricate that front bearing of the shaft and before I tried to get it apart so that hopefully that bearing wouldn't come out. But like I say, the fact that it did come out tells me that it was it was dry, very dry, and binding up. And that's very likely and possibly part of the uh, vibration problem too. So there it is. Want to put a little bit of grease on the thrust side of the bearing. Obviously, just a tiny amount.
Let's get it in there and see how it feels. Yeah, that totally different than the way it was. Yeah, so this one I'll assemble by putting the the back plate on first. And I'm partially doing this because I want to double check the position of the brushes on the commutator. And this housing is so short that it's easily uh, assembled with just holding the finger on the on the front bearing. In other words, there's no danger of the magnet uh, pulling everything apart and damaging the brushes. It's just a very short housing here. And on this one, there's only one way that it can go together. There's a location notch right there. And that's it. It's powered up. See how we did. That's good. The, that vibration seems to be gone. Just doing this for the camera so you can see the rotation. Very slow, very low voltage here, volt or two, and it's turning even. The lowest voltage I can put on it, it's still turning. Turn it up. I like all that. Okay, let's let's pay attention to the numbers now. Yeah, got eight volts on it. It's pulling about a on on you know loading it reasonably. It's you know 100, 200 milliamp. Trying to stall it, I really can't. Ten volts. Again, I'm putting you know a pretty good amount of load on it. And really squeezing a hard trying to stall it. You know, can't cannot stall it. I, I can't stall it. Even cleaning my hands, I can't stall it. I would have to use a piece of leather or uh, you know, some some saddle rosin. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And we'll move on to the rest of the project. Thank you for watching.